this video is going to be a little bit different today. It's going to be a slideshow style, and the reason for that is that I worked on this project over a series of weeks. And this project is designing my own SVG cut files from scratch. Now I have a silhouette cutting machine and I also have a Cricut Maker cutting machine and I'm interested in having cut files that will work on both of them. And I like to design some of my own stuff, but um, the Cricut software is not great and it doesn't let you do a lot of your own design work. The Silhouette software is great, but then I haven't figured out how to export files that will work in the Cricut. So I've had to turn to third-party software. Now a lot of designers will use um, Adobe Illustrator. I don't have that. Um, it's too expensive for me to look into right now. A free open source version of that software is called Inkscape. And um, it's not a very intuitive software, and I went and did a two-hour tutorial video on how to use that software, and I'll link that tutorial below. But it allowed me to actually design my own SVG file that will work in both cutting software programs. I put this cut file on my kitchen cabinet. This is our coffee zone, and my husband has nicknamed this mug cabinet the mug house, so I made this cut file for him. I enjoy learning new things, and one of the things that I'm really interested in learning right now is designing my own SVG files, like I said, and using this Inkscape software to do that is an easy step into that because the software is free. Um, <laughs> I say easy step, but maybe I shouldn't because this software isn't very intuitive, and um, I had to do a long tutorial on figuring it out. And I don't have it all figured out either because I had some issues with this project. And I'll tell you what those issues were as we go along. But I would like to encourage you, if you're interested in doing SVG design work, join me and we'll learn this thing together. One of the biggest problems I had with this project was that everything looked fine in Inkscape. And I created the SVG file and that all seemed fine. But then when I imported the SVG file into the Cricut software and into the Silhouette software, um, the file was behaving differently in each software, and actually in the Cricut software, it was behaving a little bizarrely. This um, image is a screenshot that I took of working inside of Inkscape, and you'll notice in the top left corner, it actually says Xquartz. And that's a program that Inkscape runs on top of in the Mac. And these red circles show you that the size of my image looked just fine when I was working with it in Inkscape. Just what I thought and expected. But when we get over there into working with Cricut, then we'll discover that something went very wrong. So here I am just um, importing my image into Cricut like you would with any um, third-party SVG file. And when you look at the sizing, you see that it's over a hundred inches big and that it's set way down on the bottom right corner of the um, of the canvas. And so it took me a long time to figure out that that was what was going on. And once I figured out why I couldn't even find my image on the canvas, I was able to um, manually set the X, Y coordinates and also the sizing of the image to bring it back up into a normal size and a normal spot on the canvas. When I brought that SVG file into the Silhouette software, um, I had a much better experience. Um, it wasn't perfect and we'll see here that the image size was good, but the Silhouette software automatically adjusted the page size down to um, only part of the cutting mat. And actually that page size seemed to be even smaller than the image itself. And I am not an expert at any of this stuff. Um, so I am not quite sure why that happened or where it went wrong. But I just uh, manually adjusted the page size to be 12 by 12, which is what I usually do when I'm working in Silhouette. And everything was fine. I decided to go ahead and cut my image on the Cricut Maker since I'm new to having the Cricut Maker. I wanted to experiment with it more and learn about all of its features. Um, and I haven't done vinyl on it yet, so I wanted to see how well it did. The Cricut Maker actually cut out the image just fine. It had a little bit of difficulty with the really fine, tiny uh, steam coming out of the chimney. But other than that, I have no complaints. Um, I had a little trouble weeding it, but that could just be a vinyl thing, and I don't think that's a Cricut Maker thing. Um, but I got my image ready to go. I weeded it, 
and I used my um, transfer tape to lay down over the image and um, burnished it in a little bit with my scraper there. And um, I, then I trimmed off all the edges a bit just to clean it up and make it easier to line up with the edges of my cabinet. And um, then I felt like I was ready to go, so I started peeling off the backing of the vinyl, and that's where I started having some issues. You can see that the backing paper to the vinyl actually was sticking to the vinyl itself. And when I started working in another corner of the vinyl, it was peeling up just fine. And as I started removing the vinyl, some spots were sticking, not many, um, but most of it was fine. So I'm not quite sure why that was. My vinyl is a bit on the old side, so maybe that's what's going on. But I was able to just kind of scrape away the paper where those spots had stuck, and I was able to salvage the image. So I just lined up the whole piece with the corner of my cabinet where I wanted it to go and burnished it down and then peeled away my transfer tape and that part went totally smoothly and I was left behind with a decal that I'm very satisfied with. Thanks for joining me with this project. Obviously I have some things to learn and I'm hoping that um, sharing this with you uh, helps you if you're interested in learning how to design SVG files also. And if you already know what you're doing with either designing SVG files or using vinyl and you have some comments you'd like to throw my way, go ahead and do that. I'd be happy to read them. I hope this video encourages you to go out and try something new and outside of your comfort zone. It certainly was outside of mine. I am going to share this cut file with anyone who wants to use it over on my blog. So if you look in the show notes, you can follow the link to my blog to download this image. Just know that it's imperfect, and just like I had to adjust it in this video, you might have to also. I hope you enjoy.